Woke up from a dream I had last night. Family was together, and there was no more fights. The aching pounding in my head, I felt as though all hope had fled. Fumbled for another cigarette, lit the match, and breathed the fire in. Got my two feet on the floor, I swore. I wouldn't do that no more. Call him a last chance, the angel. Last raindrop from the sky. My last chance, the angel. Last teardrop from God's eye. The chances are you'll get more radio calls to a domestic violence situation than you will to a report of sexual violence. But the power and control dynamics that drive domestic violence also drive sexual violence in intimate relationships. This intertwined web of physical force and emotional control will only get fully realized through your interview. Learning how to talk to a victim of sexual violence is both science and art. It's science because you have investigative information to gather and forensic evidence to collect. However, talking to victims is also an art form. As the interviewer, you have to be gentle, compassionate, fully present to weed out the inaccuracies, and still be attentive to the needs of the victim. First and foremost, separate the people to be interviewed. When they can still see and hear each other, there is still the possibility of intimidation. Once you've determined domestic violence, identified injuries, gotten medical attention as needed, and determined what crime has been committed, it's important in a good safety assessment to assess for sexual violence in the relationship. Sexual violence is common in domestic violence situations. Incidents can range from so-called consensual sex out of fear all the way to violent sexual assaults. Forced sex is associated with more severe injuries in domestic violence situations, and the more severe the injury, the more critical it is to do a sexual assault safety assessment. Domestic violence is based upon power and control. Often, Victims don't equate physical violence with sexual violence. For many reasons, victims of domestic violence won't bring up the topic of sexual violence on their own. They will, however, most often tell the truth if asked directly. Being a victim of any crime can be a traumatic event, but being a victim of sexual violence increases trauma dramatically. Shame, guilt, and fear are the most dominant feelings that arise. Statistically, women are most often the victims of domestic violence, but it's essential to recognize that men can also be the victim of domestic or sexual violence. And, as hard as it is for a woman to talk about these issues, it is even more difficult for a man to discuss. Okay. Okay. I understand. Now comes the artistry of interviewing in very delicate circumstances. Take your time getting to questions about sexual abuse. Ask general questions about the incident, going through all other areas first. Have there been other incidents of violence in the past? Have incidents of physical violence escalated over time in the relationship? Have you ever needed medical attention in the past? Have you ever been threatened with losing your children? Once you have the general idea of what's been happening, now you can begin to ask more specific questions. 
These example questions become the chronology of your police report, systematically creating a picture that prosecutors and jurors can see, follow and understand, giving them an overall view of the situation. Has he ever put his hands around your neck? Does he ever make you do things that you don't want to do? Moving from general questions on physical violence into questions about sexual violence is delicate. You can begin with transition questions. I'm going to ask you some questions that can be very uncomfortable. Um, have you ever submitted to having sex out of fear? In, in what way has he caused you to have sex out of fear? Does he ever give you an ultimatum to submit to sex or else? What's the or, the or else part? What happens when he wants to have sex and you don't? Has your partner ever hurt you doing sex? What happened? As you begin to ask more specific questions, help the victim identify the factual information to describe the event. It's human nature that the more emotionally upset we are, the more we jump to conclusions try to mind read what the other person was thinking, or use our imagination to predict the future. I knew exactly what he was thinking. He was trying to rape me. I understand. I understand. Let's, how, how do you know that he's... He pushed me down on the bed and pulled my shirt up, and I told him to get off of me, but he wouldn't. Pay close attention to the words and phrasing that a victim uses in their terminology, and repeat the wording back to them without correction. A victim might use the word choke when the correct legal term is strangle. Use the victim's words and write down the full description of what happened. A victim might describe being forced to have sex when the actual crime of rape is really what occurred. Use the victim's wording, but describe the elements of the crime when you determine a crime was committed. While it's essential to gather factual, logical and sequential information about the act itself, it's also important to get the broader impact of the violence in a victim's life. Is this a pattern of behavior in your relationship? Can you describe that to me? Has it always been this way? Can you, can you tell me how long it's been? Victims of sexual violence often develop a fear of people in general. They can feel a pervasive sense of vulnerability and general loss of control over their lives. Their daily sense of anxiety can be high, and they're often filled with shame, guilt, and self-blame. These chronic feelings lead to nightmares, difficulty performing simple tasks, or cause other sexual problems. This added information can help you assess if this is an ongoing problem or a one-time situation. If you believe it's a chronic problem, and you feel you'll most likely be called again in the future, consider making a direct referral to Turning Point so they can offer additional services. As a law enforcement officer, you're in a position to give something back to the victim. First and foremost is validation, which offers reassurance. I can see that you're very upset. This was very difficult. But no one deserves to be physically assaulted, and no one deserves to be sexually assaulted by anyone. It's also essential to give victims information and referrals to what additional help is available to them. These victim information packets come from the Pierce County Victim Witness Office. At the scene of an initial interview, victims are seldom able to process all the information they are given. This is an actual physiological experience. The mind and body are in overload. This is especially evident in domestic or sexual violence situations. You might get an affirmative response when you ask if they understand that there is more help available, but often they won't remember a thing you said. 
This is where Turning Point can help. Advocates specialize in serving domestic and sexual violence victims and can offer help at the time it's needed most. Last raindrop from the sky My last chance, angel Last teardrop from God's eye.